trip and fall. Well, we didn't fall. All right. Good morning. morning. Welcome, everybody. That was a great way to wake up. Wow. Thank you for that music. Ron dragged his uh, upright bass all the way over here today for our benefit. So thank you, Ron. Look forward to more of that. Merlin Simon is here as well as Jane Triple. Longtime members in the past. So you're, look at past, present, and future all like coming together. And we've got Alex back from school and we've got people here that, oh, what a great, how great to look out upon you on this beautiful fall day. Welcome everybody who's joining us by Zoom as well. We are on a journey. <clears throat> As uh, Father Greg Boyle likes to say, we're just walking each other home. We're walking each other home. And uh, welcome. And that home is called love. Walking each other home through everything, through everything that comes up. And we don't need, oh, we don't only need love, we need other things. We need faith, we need hope, we need courage, we need strength, we need wisdom. But ultimately, the journey is toward love, which is the language of the heart, the language of the heart. And what the world does need now is love, greater love, greater love. And the whole message of the gospel can be summed up in one thing, God is love, God is love. And so to realize that in practical ways in our actual daily lives requires practice, and that's what we are doing as we walk each other home together, is every day is an opportunity for practice and to embrace the truth, the truth that's right before us, the truth that's right before us, to be able to embrace and to accept and to be in reality, and not to wish for some other. This one is the one. This one is the one. And we transform personally as we journey together toward love. We don't have any music to learn today. That's unusual, isn't it? We kind of know everything. Well, we, we don't know everything. <laughs> Maybe you do. Amen. That'd be a good one to sing. Let's do that. Amen. Stand up.
I would endeavor to uh, alert you a little bit more clearly when we're not doing all the verses of a hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Kyrie 157. is within you. And also
Help us to move from head to heart. Help us not to cling to our anxious thoughts. Worries and cares abound. Bring us now to the heart. And as we breathe, may we realize that we live because you live. That we are able to love because you love, because we are made of love. for love and to love. And may this sink in for us. Deep to the root of our very being, May we discover what we are and how you have made us to be. And give us trust in the midst of this reality, not wishing or longing for some other but embracing this with transforming love. And eyes wide open. Holy Gospel, Matthew 22. As I mentioned before, um, the book of Matthew starts <coughs> with some of the most sublime teaching about the possibility of life. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the merciful, they shall see God. But of course, all these beautiful teachings are wrapped in a context, the context of a story uh, which involves conflict, danger, violence, hatred, jealousy, all the things that are also part of what it is to be alive in this world. And we're now at the end, toward the end of the story, in the last bit of time that Yeshua has before being arrested. And the lines have been drawn, the sides have been chosen. Uh, those who have chosen to follow Yeshua as their teacher are clearly identified, and those who have decided to oppose and even eliminate him have also hardened in their stance. And these are the ones who come to question him now, those who want him gone. question about paying taxes. 
Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with Herodians, saying, Teacher, 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 we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show no deference to anyone. For you don't regard people with partiality. It's a setup. That's the butter up. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting to me, me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin, coin Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? And whose title? And they answered, The emperor's. And he said to them, Give therefore, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. And when they heard this, they were amazed. And they left him and went away. The Holy Gospel. Love in the midst. Love in the midst. This is our calling. This is the way. This is the teaching. Love in the midst. But in the midst, in the real midst, in the midst of this dangerous world, this complicated situation that we all live in, both collectively and individually, with competing interests. People who don't like or maybe even hate us. Picking sides everywhere. and denigrating the other side. Hmm. Love in the midst. So this was quite a midst for Yeshua. The situation was dicey, as it is now in that region. You've got to be careful. You've got to be careful what you say. The sides are drawn. The hostility is great. It's deadly. And this is just such a situation, so the Roman occupation of Judea was real. It maintained a relative peace through force. And through brutal suppression of any kind of even questioning, much less resistance. They called this the Pax Romana the peace of Rome. But Rome, of course, had colonized far and wide, and Judea had lived under this occupation for some time. And the Roman presence was obvious. I used to live, I lived for a, a couple of months in Belfast, and the occupation of the British troops in Belfast was obvious and made to be. You were supposed to see, and you were supposed to be afraid. And so the opponents of Jesus who we must not imagine as evil people but rather people who had a very different vision for how to maintain some kind of peace and order in that society in the midst 
of a very complicated situation. And they felt worried about two things. One was Yeshua's potential threat to their own authority, but also his popularity, at least that's what the stories tell us, the popularity with the masses. He was a rather popular figure, not so much with the elite, but with the crowds. And that too could be very dangerous for the whole, to have large groups of people gathering and listening to a teacher who's talking about a kingdom that isn't the Roman Empire, a so-called kingdom of God. Now this was a common hope and a common vision, even expectation among the Jewish people of the day. For it had been centuries since they had a real kingdom like the kingdom of David. And this is why some people put their hope and expectation on Jesus. That maybe he was the king. Maybe this kingdom of God he was talking about. Maybe this was a return and a restoration of their independence. From the sometimes brutal and oppressive reign, Pax Romana. That in itself was dangerous. Regardless of how Jesus thought about himself, the fact that crowds hailed him on his way into Jerusalem with palm branches, saying, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. It's a very dangerous time. Very dangerous. Spears pointing directly at faces. And these Pharisees and Herodians were worried, and rightly so. We mustn't think of them as evil people. But they had decided Yeshua has to go. No more of this. It's too dangerous for us all. And so instead, they rallied behind the puppet king, Herod, the puppet king. Not really a king, not really, but more like a puppet king under the close supervision of Rome, who had the real power, the real authority. And the nature of that power and authority of Rome was printed on every coin, every Roman coin. And I wish I had one to show you. But what you would see on this coin is you would see an image of the head of Tiberius Caesar, the son of Augustus. Augustus was the real founder of the Roman Empire, eliminating what shred of democracy had been left. And Augustus claimed that he had the authority to do so. Why? Because he proclaimed in print on every coin that he was God's divine son. See, it wasn't Jesus who first talked about being son of God. It was Caesar Augustus. And it's in that context that we must understand the irony of what Jesus was talking about when he talked about being the son of God and the kingdom of God. It was meant to be undermining of the authority, the real world authority and the power that was all around them, the context in which they all lived. He said, no, there's another. And so in his teaching and in his responses, he questions and undermines
The rather persuasive, the rather pers, per, the rather, you, it's easy for you to say. It's the rather pervasive in human history up to the present day, including the present day, to appeal to God for political and temporal authority. Of course, religions do it as a matter of course. Our religion is endorsed by God. Our version of God is the right one. God says so. But also, in God we trust. On our own coins, in God we trust. One nation under God, indivisible. <laughs> With justice for all. <clears throat> in, under God. God bless America. I don't care which side of the political spectrum you're on, you're supposed to say it. God bless America. God bless the United States of America. We all have this instinct to appeal to the highest possible authority. And where does it get us? Where has it gotten us? I just got back from a trip in Italy recounting the history I learned as an undergraduate about the the great rivalry between popes and Holy Roman emperors and whose authority was more directly from God it was called the investiture strife. And so much blood was spilled and popes led troops in battle and emperors sacked Rome and kicked popes out of Italy into France. Whose God is greater? Whose version? Religions do it as a matter of course. Nations do it. Where does it get us? Where has it gotten us? Now, wouldn't it be nice to just say, it just shouldn't be that way, and um, just try to wish it away. And say, oh, well, you know, that's the world, forget about it. We're just going to hope for heaven after this world. That doesn't even come close to Yeshua's teaching. Such an attitude. And watch what he does with this coin. The head of Tiberius Caesar, and on the back, an image of Caesar's mother with the inscription, Pax, Peace, Lady Peace. Peace through might, peace through force, peace through the emperor and the empire. And from this divine son of the divine Augustus is the inscription on the coin. And he says, whose image is on it? And they say, Caesar's. Now, if he says anything against paying the tax, he's as good as dead. And if he influences the people to refuse to pay the tax, that they all resent. They're in the same trouble. And so he says, whose image is on it? And they say, it is the emperor. Well then give to the emperor what belongs to the emperor, but to God what belongs to God. This is not an answer to their either-or question. He takes it out of the realm of either-or and he makes it a deeper question and puts it back to them, makes it a question of the heart, from the head to the heart, to say, what is God's? What belongs to God? Who belongs to God? Who's on God's side? Who does God endorse?
Answer me that. Answer me that, oh opponents of mine. And he had them. Because they knew better here. They knew better. How to be in this world. As I said at the beginning, we need more than love. We need love. Love is the beginning, the basis, and the end of it all. And love gives us the light and the way. But we need many things. We need each other. We need courage. We need strength. We need faith. We need hope. We need wisdom. We need shrewdness. We need to use our heads. But if that's all we use, we don't see the kingdom of God. But that's a matter of the heart. And the heart knows. In a different way. And sees in a different way. And is the instrument, the organ, by which we connect with the divine and all beings with whom we are interconnected.
though some people might wonder why we sing love songs in the church. You know, right in the middle of the Bible is a, is a book called The Song of Songs, which is a love song. It's actually pretty saucy. And the imagery that it uses is the language of love, which is the language of the heart. And about the coming together and two becoming one through a loving relationship. And it was thought by the ancient rabbis, believe it or not, that this Bible was, or this, this book by Solomon, attributed to King Solomon, was the key to understanding the entire Torah. But this, this love poetry, even semi-erotic love poetry, was actually the key to understanding the heart and the depth of the law. And so, yes, and Jesus loved to speak about the wedding feast of the Lamb. This is the imagery. It is the language of love, and so entirely appropriate to sing and hear it in church and to feel it together. Okay, what's next, Mary? 
Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Amen. The peace of God be with you always. We share an expression of that with each other. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this and remember me. And again after supper he took the cup, he gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. We're going to speak the Lord's Prayer just a little bit more slowly than we're used to and a bit more mindfully. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is prepared. Everyone is welcome.
Sweet bass, right? Mm. Come on up and take a closer look at it. It's, uh, it's, it's seen some years, <laughs> and, uh, but you make it beautiful. Thank you. Um, oh, may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace until life eternal. Thank you, Jules. Appreciate you. I love to be laughed at. I mean with. <laughs> uh, do we have any celebrations today, bept, uh, birthdays or anniversaries? Wait a minute. Margie said it wasn't until the end of December. Okay, Carol, come on up. Come on, camera. Wave if it's your birthday this week. Wave if it's your birthday this week. Wave. No? Yeah, okay. Let's sing to her. I don't, I don't care when her birthday is. We're going to sing to her. All right. Yeah. What am I missing? Uh, oh, I, I have had you for the last couple of Sundays have been highlighting November 17th as a day of celebration and uh, music and so forth. We, we, had to, we had to cancel that. We're going to cast that out into the new year at some point. And um, we also are uh, wanting to use that as a fundraiser for the cello. So that'll be not this... November 17th, you can erase that from the calendar. What else? A sign up for coffee hour? For coffee hour. Yeah, first of the month. First Sunday of the month, we like to have a little coffee and gathering in the back. Um, and uh, if you'd like to host one, sign up there. I found out today that it is Pastor Appreciation Month. Um, I think it's also dog appreciation and you know sister-in-law appreciation month and that's many things but anyway um, yeah so Sing our way out. Of <laughs> That's awesome. All right, please rise. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God's countenance be lifted up upon us, giving us peace. Amen. And we see.
Go in peace. Love in the world. Okay.